while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Today's class is titled Hatred in a World of My Own. Uh, we're going to start off, I want you to bring up the definition of hate. I'll bring up the definition of hate. We're going to read, uh, it should be, I think I, po I should have posted it in that uh, channel. We're going to bring the definition, the definition number 1A. Um, 1A and read uh, the second definition under the, ver the verb tense. The definition of hate, 1A. Intense hostility and aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. So it says intense hostility. The word I want to highlight is aversion. We're going to look up that word too because that's not a word that we commonly use. But hatred is aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. Now read uh, the second definition. Not to go down more. One number one. Yeah, number two. Number two. To have a strong aversion, aversion to find very distasteful. So now go to the uh, aversion. Because remember that first definition, that 1A, it said uh, aversion usually, usually derived from fear, distrust, and I forgot the other one. Pull, up, pull that definition back up for aversion. Uh, you can read one. I think I, you can read all three of them. Aversion. Three of them for that one. 1A. A feeling of re repugnance towards someone with a desire to avoid or turn from it. A, a feeling of repugnance towards something with a desire to avoid or turn from it. So when you have hate, you, are, you have the tendency to avoid something. And like I said in the definition, you, you have the tendency to avoid something because of fear. Uh, what was it? Distrust. I forgot. I can't, can't remember the other one. Hatred. Injury. Injury. Or somebody did something wrong. Um, read C. C. A tendency to extinguish a behavior or to avoid a thing or a situation, and especially a usually pleasurable one because it is or has been associated with a noxious stimulus. So go back to the uh, definition of hate real quick. So it says intense hostility or aversions, aversion, which is avoiding something, usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. So you avoid doing something because you hate it. Uh, now go back to pull up that definition of uh, repugnance. Because in aversion, it also used, the, in, in the definition of aversion, it used the word repugnance. Uh, read that second one. B. Number two, strong dislike, distaste, or an antagonism. So now back to the definition of hate. So in, intense hostility or aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. So when you hate something, it's generally caused by, you generally, how you display that hate, you avoid it. You avoid somebody because, you avoid something because you fear it. You avoid something because a sense of injury. We're dealing with our brothers and sisters, somebody may have did something wrong, they said something, you felt some type of offense, and you avoid them. So we're going to go through a few things, of a few a few points that describe how we hate, how we display hate towards our people. That's what, hatred in the world of my own. So go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. So it says he that commits sin is of the devil. If you are, 
involved in willful sin, you're committed to sin, you are the devil. Because your mind is you always plotting and planning and scheming to commit sin. That's what your thought process is. You're not, you're not, your, your mindset, when it say, read that again. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So he that commits sin is of the devil. Meaning that that's, that's, what that's what you wake up to do. You wake up and you're plotting and planning to go commit adultery. You're plotting and planning to go and steal, to rob, to kill. That's your goal in life. You, your goal is to sin. I don't know if some of y'all seen the uh, Captains of Car class. He, they, they, well, they, what's that rapper name? Lil Nas he brought out. That video, I ain't seen the video, but just the clips and the pictures, that's somebody that's committed to sin. He showed a clip of that video. He was on a, a, a stripper pole dancing his way into hell with the devil. That's somebody that's committed to sin. They need know that, that the video, just the clips that he showed in the video, lets you know that he know what he's doing. Cause he's a, he a homosexual. He know what he's doing is wrong, and he's happy with it. That's somebody that's committed to sin. Go to, uh, let's go, we're going to come right back here. Go to 1 John 3 and 4. Just the, for the sake of edifying, 1 John 3 and 4. Let's see what sin is. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you live your life to sin, you, you live your life to break God's commandments. You are committed to sin. That's what, you're, that's what, that's what you wake up and you, that's, that's all you're about. Back to 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. So it says, for, he that committed sin, you of the devil. Read. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the Christ was manifested to return us unto the Most High God to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy sin, to free us and show, to lay an example out for us to let us know that we can keep the commandments. That's why Christ came. Read. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. So now it says, whosoever is born of God. So if we say we Israel, we say we the Israelites, it says that's when you're born of God. But if you truly, if you truly, are walking in that light of you being an Israelite, you're not going to be committed to sin. You're going to be committed to studying the laws and applying God's commandments. That's going to be your mindset. Uh, let me backtrack real quick. Go to uh, get Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 3. Ecclesiastes 8 and 3. Because nope. in, uh, in verse 8, it says, He that commits sin is of the devil. Remember, somebody, that's somebody that's committed to sin. That's what they live their life for. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And that's what we see today. This is somebody that's committed to sin. What we see today in all the videos, everything that's going out in the media, the LGBT, all of this stuff, they think, it's, they think it's okay because judgment ain't came yet. Because the, a, a physical judgment, when they in the act and judgment come, because it's been delayed, so to say, they, they, the heart of men is set to do evil. Their mind is set on sin. That's all we see. That's why uh, it's a saying, it's, uh, sex sells. That's all you see when you turn on, if you turn on, if you watch TV, I haven't watched TV in a while, but you watch TV, all the commercials, you driving on the expressway, the billboards, it's a, it's a strip club advertisement. It's all type of evil. You have a woman in a bikini um, advertising some toothpaste. Everything is set on wickedness. Everything is set on wickedness. And that's, that just shows you that he that committed to, like, the, like we go back to 1 John. 1 John. And said, he that committed sin is of the devil. We know we are in the devil playground because that's everything that's being pushed out. Everything that's being pushed out is, is pushed out to keep us in sin. Uh, go back to 1 John and read 3 and 9. 
the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. Uh -huh. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So if you are, if you are born of God, it said, when it says you, you, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, meaning that you, 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 you accept, you, you know that you are Israelite, you understand that Christ died for the nation of Israel, you understand it and you believe it, you're going to apply the commandments. No matter what, under all costs, your goal is to apply the commandments. Go to Proverbs 24 and 16. Your mind is fully set on keeping the commandments. You might make a mistake here and there, but even in the midst of those mistakes, you, you, you mistake, you make a mistake, you slip up. You slip up and lie. You slip up and do something that you're not, keep the, you, you slip up and break a commandment. Your heart, you feel bad. You feel sorrow from making that mistake. And you're gonna correct yourself. That's somebody that's that's committed to keeping the commandments. That's somebody that's born of God. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. So it says, a just man falleth seven times, but he rises up again. We see an example of that in David. David had a man put to death to try to hide his sin of committing adultery. But the Most High called him a, a man after God's own heart. That lets you know that David was a just man. When, he was, when, he, when his sin was shown, shown unto him, he repented immediately. He was, he was blameless. He didn't try to hide it and like, nah, that was, he, 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 he accepted the responsibility for his actions and he repented quickly. Nobody had, to, he didn't have to get coerced. He, he repented. Um, from there, what's the, so with that scripture, read that again. Proverbs 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. So who can give me a precept for just? So it says a just man falleth seven times. Who can give me a precept for just? How do we know what a just man is? Uh, Uriel. Uh, justice, Ezekiel 18 and 5. Exactly. Let's get that. So make sure y'all, y'all brothers, write that down next to that scripture. Write that, precept that in your Bible. Write it down. It's okay to write in your Bible. Because you, 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 it's it, your memory. You ain't gonna remember everything. It's good to write that in your Bible so you know what a just man is. Let's read that in Ezekiel 18 and 5. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 5. But if a man be just. So notice it said, if a man be just. If you're a just man, what, what is a just man going to do? And do that which is lawful and right. A just man is going to do that which is lawful and right. A just man is going to keep the commandments. Okay, so back to 1 John chapter 3 and 9. This is a book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 9. Whosoever is born of God do of not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. He's not going to mess up and then just fall out. So people, the brothers and sisters that you see, well, I ain't going to say brothers and sisters. The people that you see that, that commit adultery or do they do something, they, they do it in, in the midst of some evil, they get put out and they never come back. They was, like the, like the other scriptures say, they was not of us. They was not about keeping God's commandments because they didn't endure. You, if you mess up, you, you sin, you get back up, repent, send up the prayers, and, and keep pushing. Keep enduring in this truth. That's how you know a person is born of God. If they're if they not born of God, when trouble come, they're going to run. Read on. Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So it says, Los Linares letting you know, it's the, this is the distinguishing point. The children of God and the children of the devil. The children of God is going to keep, keep the commandments. And they're going to, like I said at the end of the verse, they're going to love, uh, uh, the children of God is going to love their brother, their neighbor as they self, love their brother as they self. You're not of God if you have no regard or thought of your people. 
us being in repentance, our, every, the things that we do, we got to understand. Yes, of course, we're going to get our houses together. We're going to get ourselves in order. But we understand that the whole purpose of us getting ourselves together is to get what the, the men is to get to build up your spirit, to get that sin up off of you so you can go out and teach your people and bring the rest of the nation of Israel in. For the sisters, it's to build your spirit up so that next sister that come in behind you, to in some day, some point, you're going to become that senior sister. You're going to become that older sister in the truth that's able to edify the sisters that came in after you, to get them examples, to show them what they need to do to get their mind right. Uh, read on. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is what, this is the whole, when you go from the, go back to Genesis, from the beginning, this was, this is what is this is what it's about. It's about the nation of Israel. And one thing that, that over, over the course of time that run revel, rampant amongst Israel is a spirit of hatred. We do a lot, we do a lot of things selfishly. That's why the name of the class is in the world of my own. Because when you show, when you got hatred, all you're thinking about is yourself. When you do certain things, all you're thinking about is yourself. When you don't do certain things, all you're thinking about is yourself. So the level of hatred is shown. One of the ways that hatred is shown is by you hiding your talents. Hiding your talents. You got certain gifts and abilities, but no, nah, you won't use them. You put your hands on your butt and sit on it, and you won't use your gifts. The gifts that the Most High gave you, you won't use them to help push the truth, to help get the word out, to help go out and bring more people in. Go to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. And as we're about to read, we're about to read through, through this parable. A talent, when you look it up, a talent is a sum of money. It's a form of money. But remember, Christ spoke to us in parables. So this talent is equivalent to what we would look at as the very the different gifts and abilities that we have. Some of those gifts and abilities we have that we just... We were just born with them, and some gifts and abilities we had through various work experiences, whether you went to school, you learned things. All of those things you learned for the purpose of today. You came into this truth. Now it's time to use those things in this truth when the time is right. After you spend that, 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 that year or so getting your own self right, now after that time, you got to get your hand to the plow. You got to start putting in work, using your abilities to help bring in the next tier of people, the next tier of men, the next tier of women. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So that man that went into a far country is Christ. And the people that he left with, um, the people that he left, his goods is us. Read. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So to let you know, some of us have multiple gifts and talents. Some of us only have a couple. Some of us only have one. But it's a reason and purpose behind her, us, him giving us. It's, notice it says he gave to everyone according to his several ability. So some of us have multiple talents, but are you, are you multiplying those multiple talents? He gave us, he left us with v various gifts and abilities. Some of those abilities that many of us have, you, some of us, a lot of us have creative abilities. You're able to draw, graphic design, camera work, et cetera. That's what, that's what you see the memes that come out. The, um, the memes, gifs, whatever, whatever have you. Memes, different images to show a point. The stuff that the uh, scriptures of the day that's posted, all of those things. Uh, some of us are able to write grants. Some of us have acting abilities. Some of, a, of us, uh, some of us are able to manage a project, project management. Some of us are, are very motivational. We inspire them. You speak to somebody, you inspire them to do better. You inspire them to examine themselves and move forward. Some of us have marketing skills, dealing with sales, advertising, teaching, teaching the children. Meaning you may you may you may be a you may have been a teacher and before you came into the truth you may have been a teacher at a um, at a school college whatever that is that stuff can be used here in the in the uh, in the nation of Israel you could be multilingual where you know multiple languages 
You had a, a strong ability to organize, sewing, talking. You might have the, as they say, the gift of gab, where you could just talk, spark a conversation with anybody. That's a gift, because everybody ain't got that. People need for the, the somebody that has a gift of talking, the people that's so-called introverted need, need the person that's got the gift of talking because the introverted person will go sit down and be cool. They'd be content sitting there, don't talk to nobody. And they ain't got nothing against nobody, but they content just sitting there. But that person that, that's talkative, that got that gift, that person to go and talk to that introverted person and bring, and you talking to them will help bring them out of that shell of being introverted. Where they are able to go, they'll learn from you to they'll be able to go out and talk to others, spark a conversation. That's you multiplying your gifts. Uh, some of us have gifts of carpentry, construction, building. We get in schools. That's a, that's a necessary component of having a school. That's how this stage was built. That's how the posters are hung. All the gifts that we have, we're supposed to multiply them. So let's uh, read on, verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Meaning he, he was given five gifts. Let's say he had the gift of, uh, he had a creative ability, acting, project management, construction, talking, so on. He went out and multiplied. He went out and seen people that had the, the inclination to learn, the willingness to learn, and he duplicated himself. He made more people that can do construction, more people that was, had the ability to talk. That way, when, if, if one person knows something you, and you duplicate yourself, now you can spread it around. You can cover more territory. You can get more done. But if you have those, if you have five talents, you got five gifts and abilities, but you're not sharing them, you're not using them, you hate your people. You're not using what the Most High gave you to help build up the nation of Israel. That's a form of hatred because you're being selfish, whether it be you have a reluctance, you're scared, you, you dealt with a lot of rejection in your past, so now you really don't want to do it because you're scared you're going to re get rejected. No, now you're in this truth. You got to overcome that fear. You got to overcome that to help build up your nation because that's why you have the gifts you had. You learned the things that you learned in the world before this truth so that you can use them in this truth. Uh, read on. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. Uh huh. But he that had received one, went and digged into the earth and hid his Lord's money. So we see, we see here that two, two of the servants that was given gifts, they, two of them multiplied their talents, meaning they taught other people to do the same thing they was able to do so that could, more ground was covered. But one, it said he hid his talent. In other words, he put his hands under his butt and sat on his talent and said, hey, I ain't, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to hold on to this talent because I don't want to lose it. So go real quick. Go to Sirach chapter 41 and 15. This is the spirit that we supposed to have and not supposed to have. No, let me correct that. This is the spirit we supposed to have. The book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach chapter 41, verse 15. A man that hideth his foolishness is better than a man that hideth his wisdom. So it says a man that hideth his foolishness. Is better than a man that hides his wisdom. Because you want a fool to hide his foolishness because if a fool don't hide their foolishness, it's going to be wickedness all over the place. But a man that got wisdom, you don't want him to hide his wisdom. Because when he let his wisdom come out, he going to build up other people. He or she going to build up other people to do the same thing that they do. He going he gonna to motivate the people to do things. He going to build up his nation by sharing his wisdom. From there, go to Sirach chapter 33 and 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. So in this truth, we can't be selfish. The things, the work that we put in, the studying that we do, the work that we put in, it's not just for ourselves. We don't study just for ourselves. We study, we study and, and, and put in work and use our gifts and talents. For those that seek learning, those that's coming in after us, we get built up so we can build up the next man. We can't, we can't withhold the things that was given unto us from the people that come in after us because our nation need us. 
those that have not come in those doors yet, that aren't going to come in the doors, they need us. So we all got to have a mindset to be able to assist and help. We got to step out of our comfort zone. Because if we don't step out of our comfort zone, comfort zone, that's hatred. We being selfish. Um, go back to Matthew 25. Matthew 25 and 20 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 25, verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord Please. said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. So when we multiply our talents, it goes into our reward. We multiply our talents now, meaning you know, over you overcame your setbacks, you overcome your, your, your any fears you may have had, any any um, discomforts to to multiply. It says, "I will make you ruler over many things," because you applied the discipline to build up others. Now, when you you're gonna get the kingdom for one, and then you're gonna be ruler over many things. You gonna have a lot of responsibility, which is a good thing. Because you multiplied your talents. Now let's jump from there. Because the, the, the chief thing for us to do, the, now we're saying that, yeah, we're talking about gifts and abilities. But the chief thing, the chief thing and the most important thing we're supposed to multiply is God's laws. We learn, we learn the laws. Now we, it's time for us to go out and be a light to those that haven't yet learned. We got our fringes on. We in the store. People, gonna, people looking at your fringes. Pretty sure everybody in here, you done, you done been in the store, especially the sisters, you, you all, you got on the dress. You done been in the store before. Somebody look at you, they may approach you. Oh, you look beautiful. You got this, that, and the third. That's, what we, that's why we keep the commandments. I done been in the store with my friends on and walked past the brother that work, work in the store, and he stopped me and said, hey, man, where you get that from? Man, that look good. Those are all opportunities for you to spread the gospel, for you to teach who we are and what we are about. But if in, in, a, in a, just using the fringes as an example, if you walk around and you ain't got no fringes, how you how you how are you going how are you how are you showing love to your people? You're not because you're walking around and you blending in with the crowd. That's that's having a level of hatred for your people. You hate you 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 hate you hate God's laws, so you you hide them. Now you you're not doing nothing for your people. From there, go to um, go back to Matthew 25, jump to 24. <clears throat> the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not scrawled. So now we're gonna see, we're gonna see what happened to the man that hid his talent, that didn't go out and multiply his gifts, that had understanding but didn't go out and teach, didn't build up his spirit to go out and teach the people, never came to MOV. The sisters never never attended a Titus II, never, never participate in the things that's going on to help build up the spirits. Read. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is, that, that is thine. These are those that, you know what, I'm an introvert. I, I'm going I'm to wait. I don't want to, I don't want to put myself out there because I'm scared. I'm introverted. I'm used to being to myself. We just read on. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap what I sow not, and gather what I have not scrawled. Uh -huh. Thou artest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with the usury. So when you, when you, if you know anything about bank, certain, you, if you have a bank account, certain bank accounts, you could put your money in their savings accounts where it gain interest over time. You leave that money in there and it gain a certain percentage of interest. That's the same thing that we are supposed to do with the gifts and abilities that we get. We invest in others to build others up, to do the same thing that we can do, even better, so that more people can get more done, more people can cover more ground. That goes with us keep us studying to learn the laws. Now we can go out and teach our brothers and sisters the laws so that now they can learn and come in. 
read. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. So it's saying if you if you have the you you got talents and you sitting in here and you not doing anything, it said it's gonna be taken from you and given to him that has ten talents. Why? Because now he, he gonna reproduce that talent that he gonna re- reproduce that ability that was given to you. That you were supposed to do, but you was too scared, too timid to do it. Read. For unto everyone that have shall be given. So those that have, more are going to be given to them. Read. And he shall have abundance. Uh huh. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he have. So you, 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 you came to the knowledge of the truth. Know you in this way, like you got a gift, but you don't, you decide not to use it. Three, four, five, six years go by, and you have done nothing. It says, read that again. For unto every one that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he have. So even the gift that you have is going to be taken from you. And what else is going to happen? And cast ye the unprofitable servant. He called, notice, he calls you an unprofitable servant. When you look up the word profit, it's like in, in terms of business. A business to buy something wholesale, let's say they buy a cabinet for $70. They put it on a shelf and they sell it for one fifty, so they didn't gain they they didn't gain the profit. I don't I don't know the percentage. I can't it wasn't near my yet. I can't remember the 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 um the profit margin, but they gained another eighty dollars on top of that seventy. But the unprofitable servant went and bought the, the cabinet for seventy dollars and didn't even put it out for sale. So now it's just sitting catching dust. So now they didn't, they didn't, you're not even going to make back what you gave. It's just going to sit there, and, and that's just $70 lost. That's what an unprofitable servant is. You got a gift of talent, and it's just going to waste because you're not using it. That's hatred. That's a form of hatred. You hate your people because you got different gifts, and you're not using them to further the gospel, to further the truth. Read. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Meaning you're not going to get the kingdom. You're going to be put to death. So if you have talents and you're sitting on them and you ain't, you ain't doing nothing with it, you're not using, you're being selfish. You're showing you a level of hatred towards your people because you're not putting forth bricks to, to help build up the nation of Israel. You're not using the gifts and talents that you have, that you have learned over the course of your life. You're just sitting on them, sitting on them and let them be dormant. Ain't no such thing as something, something just sitting. It's, it decays. When things sit, it just decays and get worse and worse. It don't stay the same. Anything that sit and you don't get, you don't, it don't get put to use, it decays. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth